What would happen if Karl Marx rose from the dead and woke up in modern-day London? Would he recognize the city where he lived in exile? It may be a dream destination for well-heeled tourists, but with all its luxury shops and flats, it's a nightmare for the working classes. Could Marx afford to live in the inner city? Absolutely not. He'd likely wind up sleeping in a phone booth. So what would Marx have to say today? Exploitation, commodity fetishism, and the power of money. Which of his theories are still relevant? At Piccadilly Circus, I meet Marx researcher Lucia Pradella. She came to London a decade ago to study Marx's writings in the libraries where he once read and conducted research. Pradella takes us on a walking tour through Soho, the area where Marx once lived. Our first stop, the former Red Lion pub, birthplace of the Communist Manifesto. Today, it's a cocktail lounge. Would Marx be shocked? Surely he would be surprised to see Soho today because uh, at his time it was really different. It was a very poor area and a lot of uh, uh, German um, and other European refugees actually lived here. But I don't think he would be surprised to see capitalism today. I think that actually uh, he predicted uh, many of the processes that we are witnessing today from, you know, the kind of uh, globalization of uh, production and trade, uh, inc increasing migration and internationalization, not only of capital, but also of the working class. Karl Marx himself has become a product marketed around the globe. There's even a hair salon in Chinatown named after him. Well, I guess even philosophers have to get a haircut sometimes. This is Dean Street, where Marx lived with his wife Jenny and their children in a two-room flat. They barely had enough money for rent and food. Three of their children died during their time in Soho. Marx knew about the daily struggle for survival. In his day, people were literally worked to death in factories. That still happens today in places like China and Bangladesh. But in Europe too, exploitation remains common and has got worse in the wake of the economic crisis. The crisis has led to increasing exploitation because uh, one of the effects of the crisis hasn't been just like cutting on social services, lo uh, lowering wages and so on, but also lengthening of the working time, working hours. The number of people that work more than uh, 48 hours a week has increased by millions, yes, after the crisis. When we talk about exploitation, we have to talk about working conditions of uh, Chinese workers and Bangladesh seamstresses. If we look at the struggles of workers uh, uh, at Foxconn in China who protested against the inhuman conditions in the factories, they actually kind of uh, uh, make these relations that are behind our commodities visible. But if we go to an Apple store here, probably people in retail are also low paid, overworked. So the awareness can actually uh, link together people from different parts of the world. I don't think uh, it's something that uh, concerns only countries in the south. I think uh, it's a kind of globalized experience that actually Marx uh, predicted. Lucia Pradella believes in the communist ideal of international solidarity and the power of the collective. But are we really ready to do without, to consume less so others have more from life? I'm on my way to the south of London to meet Nina Power. She's a renowned expert on Marx and a staunch feminist. What would Marx have to say about the gender pay gap and gender inequality? Why are men still paid more than women for the same work? Patriarchy and capitalism is a very, you know, happy fit. They love each other. And actually what capitalism does is to reinforce the differences between men and women and to treat women as property on the basis of their capacity to reproduce. And both Engels and Marx recognize this. Let's take a look into the future world, where there's artificial intelligence doing alienated labor for us. Um, could it be that there won't be such a thing as a working class anymore? We are not yet at a point at which we would say that robots could look after our babies, or that we should be like employing robots to take care of older people's loneliness. You know, they have trialed these things in parts of the world, like so for, in Japan, for example. They might be a distraction, but they are no replacement for human contact. On the one hand, I'd be quite happy 
if women and men didn't have to sell sex and if we could replace it with sex robots or something like that and if you could generate an AI that, you know, did the job, like, that would be better in the sense that fewer human beings would be exploited. Um, but at the same time, I'm not sure this is, like, what we should be aiming for. If it can help us be more together and more in more solidarity and help each other, fine. But otherwise, I'm not interested. Karl Marx lies buried in Highgate Cemetery. Marx is dead. Long live Marx. We need visionary thinkers like him more than ever, as the problems of exploitation, poverty and inequality remain unsolved. Karl Marx outlined a vision of a better world, but it's up to us to create it. Thank you.